Shocking new reporting has emerged uh, for a potential plagiarism scandal surrounding Harvard University President Claudine Gay. Conservative writer Christopher Rufo wrote on X that uh, Chris Brunette and he have obtained documentation demonstrating that Harvard President Claudine Gay plagiarized multiple sections of her PhD thesis, violating Harvard's policies on academic integrity. According to Rufo, Gay lists an entire paragraph, nearly verbatim, from a paper by Lawrence Bobo and Franklin Gilliams, while passing it off as her own para, uh, paraphrase and language. This is a direct violation of Harvard's policies that say, quote, when you paraphrase, your task is to to distill the source's ideas in your own words. If your own language is too close to the original, then you are plagiarizing, even if you do provide a citation. In other parts of her paper, Gay allegedly appears to take material from a scholar, Carol Swain, one passage summarizing the distinction between descriptive representation and substantive representation. She copies the phrasing a phrasing and language nearly verbatim from Swain's book, Black Faces, Black Interests, without providing a citation of any kind. Rufo wrote, writes that she also reportedly puts together an entire appendix in her dissertation taken from Gary King's book, A Solution to Ecological Interference Problem, while she cites King's book later in the appendix. In fact, King was her dissertation advisor. Gay does not explicitly acknowledge that Appendix B is entirely grounded in King's concepts and language, instead passing it off as their own original work. This comes as elite university presidents, including Gay, are coming under fire for their handling of anti-Semitism on free speech uh, on campus. Let's watch Gay's viral moments from the halls of Congress last week. Can you but not say here that it is also... against the code of conduct at Harvard? We embrace a commitment to free expression, even of views that are objectionable, offensive, hateful. It's when that speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies against bullying, harassment, Does that speech not cross that barrier? Does that speech not call for the genocide of Jews and the elimination of Israel? When you that testify that you understand that is the def definition of intifada. Is that speech according to the code of conduct or not? We embrace a commitment to free expression and give a wide berth to free expression, even of views that are objectionable. You and I both know that's offensive. not the case. You are aware that Harvard ranked dead last when it came to free speech. Are you not aware of that report? And Gay is not the only uh, university president who testified last week, uh, still under massive pressure. In fact, University of Pennsylvania President Liz McGill resigned over the weekend. As a reminder, here's a little bit of what her testimony looked like. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. Yes. I, I am asking specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. The Penn Board of Trustees announced on Saturday that McGill would be stepping down as president, but will remain a tenured faculty member. So um, starting with these allegations against Claudine Gay, I looked through what uh, Christopher Rufo had assembled. It looks pretty bad to me, um, several instances of um, — there is attribution in places, but of the same phrasing being used far too frequently, um, you know, if that happens every now and then. But that's quite a few examples of that. How what is this not — um, goalpost shifting from Christopher Rufo. Why do you think there's a sudden interest in Roxane Gay's um, award-winning thesis? I should note that um, she attended, uh, after uh, Phillips Exeter Academy, she went to Stanford University, majored in economics, where she won the Anna Laura Myers Prize for Best Undergraduate Thesis in Economics and graduated in 92, and then earned her PhD in 98 from Harvard, where she also won the university's Topin Prize for Best Dissertation in Political Science. Why do you think that he is interested now in scrutinizing her academic record? Well, I'm, I'm less interested in why he's doing it and more interested in the fact that the president of Harvard violated the academic standards to That's which so the students are held. That's so interesting to me, because I'm so much more interested in why, at the time when all of these, there is a right-wing pogrom against free speech at campus universities, specifically in defense of a country that's in the middle of a genocide, why there would be a sudden interest oh. in the background of a university president. To me, that seems odd obviously connected, and as, as reflected in the fact that we've packaged them together in the segment. Okay, so we can't 
what are you saying? We can't hold someone accountable for violating the academic of course standards you of can. the university? Of course, you can. I think it's an interesting question as to why We're it going is to impute that someone the motives like of I, I would I think it's an interesting question why Krista Rufo, for example, is interested in interrogating the academic record and closely reading the twenty year old record uh, thesis of someone like um, Claudine Gay, but not interested in ever commenting, as far as I know, on the plagiarism accusations that have come on someone like Alan Dershowitz, which Norm <laughs> Finkelstein, who has talked at length about this, there's a very famous clip of the two of them debating this head-to-head -head on Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman, um, called into question it's very similar kinds of citation errors, non-attribution in the case of Alan Dershowitz in his book, uh, I believe it's called A Defense of Israel. So the question is, yes, why is there a selective interest in these kinds of things that is imputing the qualifications of folks, and is it politically motivated? Why would having to take an issue on a totally unrelated, separate plagiarism issue that I'm, I've, I've heard of the Alan Dershowitz thing, I'm not personally familiar, I, there, so there'd be no way for me to take a position on it, because I haven't looked into whether, what the merit of the allegations is. This has nothing to do with that, and we're talking about the standards of the president of the university. Well, asking, I find it interesting that it, it, apparently the vetting of these things is so lax that no one would have noticed it until now. But you're saying you're saying this just, this is off the table because we haven't investigated a, to, a years old, a totally unrelated well, it's thing. It's not about we and us. It's why is Christopher Rufo, who's been very clear about what his political objectives are, right? He has said very openly about what he endeavored to do with coining the term wokeness and making a po uh, uh, focusing attacks on something called um, uh, critical race theory, a term that most people in America had never heard of before. Mm -hmm. He specifically said it is easier to get people mad at something called critical race theory than saying that very explicitly we shouldn't be talking about race or diversity or historical um, prejudice against groups, obviously that doesn't come across as well, so we're going to say, no, 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 we're going to use all these acronyms. I mean, he very much has a political agenda, and so I do think it would be a naive to talk about a subject like this without engaging with what his obvious political project is here. And it seems to me that there, rightly or wrongly, whether or not Claudine Gay transgressed, the reason he is interested in her particular transgression seems to have everything to do with a, um, a desire to get a bunch of uh, uh, presidents of universities fired because they don't agree with Christopher Rufo's particular set of politics. And I don't know that that is in service of the free speech objectives that I hold, and I think a lot of people in the world and in the audience hold. Okay, well, I, I don't think she should be fired for not agreeing politically with Chris Rufo, but I do think she should be in the same way that Harvard students would be disciplined, you know, subject to a investigation or a hearing where they have the right to represent their own interests and push back would be held accountable for those. I mean, this, this isn't about, this isn't well, really about okay, policy so on some let's, level. Let's, this is about. Let's play that out. Let's play that out. So if this is the standard, I think that what we should do is go back through every member of Harvard faculty. And by the way, Harvard's not the only school in America. It's interesting that these conservatives seem to have this obsession with elite universities um, when most people don't go to those. And it almost seems disrespectful to the experience that most Americans have to act like Harvard's the only place in the world. I mean, Christopher Rufo went there. Maybe that's why. But to go through the, the, the people who are on faculty at all universities, use this new software we have with ChatGPT and, and things like that, and see if there's any examples like that, and then fire everybody, or at least have everybody come under review, including someone like Alan Dershowitz. So Would that saying, be fair? So we, I have no problem with that. It seems yeah. like you're the one saying that we can't do anything about this or Absolutely can't care not. about I this think, or have any I interest in this because standard. you cannot find examples where no. some... I person think, that you don't like politically was not It's not the issue with. about where they like him politically. It's the issue of whether or I mean, not think, people are selectively going after folks because of their politics as opposed to actually having a sincere interest in upholding a, an academic standard. If it's about going back to the people's— allegations against um, Dershowitz, which, again, I have no idea about. It could be accurate or not. I, you don't think those were motivated by some— Political disinterest in what he's doing. Oh, it's, it's there, were there no there were no political motive motives from Norm Finkelstein or whoever brought that up. Norm I mean, Finkelstein, that's transparently ridiculous. I'm happy to answer the question. Okay, Norm Finkelstein's political motives are that he is the the global utmost scholar on Gaza, the history of Gaza, and what's been going there on there uh, for the last 75 years, and that as a scholar of Gaza, he read um, Alan Dershowitz's work, uh, which makes an opposite case for. 
Israel's legitimacy to its behavior in that region. And because he literally is a scholar of that area of work, he could discern mistakes, errors, and less plagiarism in the context of his work. So he had, obviously, a very pointed, I would call it an academic interest, as opposed to political interest. But yes, he is, a, he is literally a scholar of Palestinian history. And as Norm Finkelstein always says, I follow the facts. <laughs> I'm interested in the facts in that, in that way that he has. Um, and that's where the facts took him. So yeah, regardless of whatever politics, maybe Roxanne, sorry, Roxanne Gay is her cousin. Um, uh, Claudia Gay is out. Uh, and maybe a bunch of other people are out too. But I am, of course, discomforted. It's just like stop and frisk. When you stop and frisk people, Sometimes you find people who are breaking the law, and you can say, well, they shouldn't have broken the law. But if I am selectively posting a police officer outside of your house and nobody else's, or in somebody's neighborhood but not somebody else's, and make it so they're much more likely to be caught up in the law, that is a problem, right? I, I, I think it's... I think it's naive to say Christopher Rufo is using something fundamentally different from what Norm Finkelstein did there. It's, it's scrutiny for political purpose of someone who maybe committed the crime, and that we, that we should well, evaluate it based on, we don't need to get into the motives, because we can see Christopher Rufo We don't need point, to get into the motives, Robbie. Do, do you think that the, the effort to oust all of these presidents is a, a good thing and in furtherance of free speech objectives? I think ousting a president for committing academic infractions that are important at the university that would, that would apply to the students there is a perfectly valid and do you think that Christopher that. the timing of Christopher Rufo looking into Claudine Gay care. so you don't care but that's I'm okay it's obviously no, no Christopher Rufo has existed his whole life Roxanne Gay has been president for I think a year she's fairly recent but for I think a year or so and no one has ever had any interest in any of these things. And Christo Rufo does not have a broad interest in whether or not many people at Harvard University or other universities have violated academic policies. Is quite clearly does Norm trying Finkelstein to have find... a broad interest. Again, it's, it's the same no, but, thing. It was but... a dispute with one person. And if there's subs, if Robbie. there's truth to the allegations, Robbie. then they should be dealt Fine. with, regardless of the motivations so of the let's, person. So let's go through all of the presidents and all of the faculty members at Harvard University. Okay, we don't have to wait university. to do anything about Claudine Gay until that happens. I think that we do actually have to wait, because there's a question of whether oh. academic academic standards are going to be held up for everyone, or disproportionately, because there is a right-wing pogrom against free speech. No, academic happening standards at, are being happening for the at, students at Harvard. Happening at Harvard University and other elite universities, because they're increasing trying to make it stigmatized, if not illegal, to be critical of an independent state on the, on the globe called Israel. That is, at, of course, at what spot it. When we had the Red, red Scare and the pogroms in the, in the mid part of the last century and actors getting kicked out of Hollywood, there were a n any number of pretexts to use to minimize people's free speech, to kick them off of apps, to fire them from their jobs. And I'm sorry, Robbie, it is, it is it is so. It is short-sighted to say, "Well, I don't happen to like this person. Oh, there's a legitimacy here to this claim. Therefore, they should be ousted." When we have nothing but historical record after historical record of people using pretexts to uh, uh, accomplish their censorious. This is not. A, this objectives. is not a pretext, and it's not about censorship. She's the president of the university. It's an academic position. These are academic standards to which students and professors are held, and she should be held to it like anyone else. It's not about policy. Like anyone it's else? It's not about her free speech policy. Like yes, else? like anyone okay, else. Okay, so then let's say I would agree with that if that standard were applied to everyone and there was a fulsome review of all of the other professors at Harvard and these other institutions, given that now we have the software, which I'm sure Rufo used, to go back it and... It is applied to students, and if students are caught doing these things, they get in trouble. Bobby, let me, let me finish the sentence. If there is a fulsome review of all of the other um, theses, of all the other faculty members that can now be done quite quickly. I mean, I'm not surprised that people don't catch all of these things because it's difficult to. And as someone, you know, I have friends now that are teachers that are dealing with this chat GPT stuff, and all they do now is try to find um, these mistakes. So let's use the software that we have, go back through all the theses, and then have a conversation about what we want to do holistically when we discover exactly how many instances of this come up. And is Claudine Gay going to be held accountable uniquely, perhaps because of her views on Israel or because of her willingness to uphold the academic policy that it does not prohibit uh, critical speech of Israel? Or this is not about speech on Israel. It's just not. It's just not. It's about 
academic standards. But why are you resisting to which you the idea of waiting until we do a holistic review of all of the professors? We can, no, I'm not going to make a no. decision. I'm not, we can do a holistic review of her. She shouldn't be like willy nilly fired on the spot. There should be a you know a academic committee. Someone should impartially look at this, and she can say what and, and you know rigor, rigorously read the Harvard standards. I'm not saying like fire on, on the spot, but no, it's not because well. We have to wait for other people to be. That's so Robbie, just, if that's they just were, excuse making. If they that's were, excuse making for bad academic behavior. So that's if they all were to, it is. Yes. If they were to apply the ChatGPT software and find out that, I, and I wouldn't be surprised about this, if thirty percent of all theses had some version of this, where there's a citation, but uh, the rephrasing of the of the thing they're citing and yeah. characterizing it doesn't do enough to like mix up the words and find synonyms for words and, and to rephrase it. If you found that a substantial chunk of students and faculty make up a number, I don't care what it is, 25, 30, 40%, had at least one instance of that in their theses, would that affect your feeling about what kind of course of action should be taken against the 30% of Harvard graduates, 30% of uh, Harvard professors that would be implicated in this? No, I, they should be disciplined for that. And now, let's be Disciplined how? Like one or t an occasion, like one uh, example of a paraphrase, yeah, not like, is not. Yeah. Well, this was this was more than one. There were a it number was of two. We we talked about two. Well, he no, he has a whole thread of a number of examples. We just talked about two, but there's there's more. Um, I mean, this is something a committee should weigh. I'm At what the, point no, does I it become? I see the Swain part that we talked about. And I saw that first long paragraph. And he breaks parts of them down and talks about them. But I see two instances in this award-winning thesis that's described here in this Rufo thing. It was, a, it was a couple different, no, it was a couple different phrases. In, in two paragraphs? Yeah. OK. <laughs> in this award-winning thesis. So if the de minimis instance like this, where there's two paragraphs that have not been sufficiently rewritten, comes up in a significant number of other theses, what would you have happen? What, whatever the appropriate, this is, when this happens, what do they do about it? All right, and it's they completely irrelevant to you that there's currently an agitation for, for Claudia Gay to be fired. Not for there to be a review, but that, that for her to be fired, and this is now being piiled upon that effort. Again, she should just be held accountable like anyone else how? would be in this position. How would I don't know. I don't know how Harvard handles so this. Maybe they give a warning. I'm... Maybe they. I didn't call for her to be fired. I just said this. This is a serious enough issue when it comes up for other people. And the, I don't care about the motives. I care about it. Be, that she's the president of the university, and she should be subjected to at least the same standards as anyone else who commits an academic offense. And it has nothing to do with Israeli speech, for which I don't want her held accountable. All right. Well, if she happens to be fired for this, it'll absolutely have nothing to do with uh, the whole other part of the segment about uh, people's Israel. motives only matter when you don't like the person. That's not okay. Is this, right. this, is that hold true for Christopher Rufo and his obvious distaste for Claudine Gay? Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. More rising right after this.